Hello, this is David Heine, Aspect Art. Today we're in the Allard Pearson, which is Amsterdam's archaeological museum. A museum actually that deserves a little more uh, attention than it actually gets. We're here for an exhibition about antique glass, and they cover almost 2,000 years. They show methods, there's a fine little film that explains how glass was invented and how it evolved during the year, and some very beautiful examples of antique glass. So join us now in the Allard Pearson for Antique Glass. Thank you. Rene, we're here in the Allard Pearson for your new show about glass, antique glass that is. Could you tell us a little about the history of glass itself and how it became so important to everyone? Well, history of glass is a very important history because uh, glass is one of the most important uh, uh, things which were used in, in, in ancient periods, in the, the Greek period, in the Roman period, especially in the Roman periods. Uh, for example, the end of the first century AD, uh, a, a common Roman house uh, had contained uh, more than 75 or 80 glass objects, uh, all objects which were used for containing wine or oil or perfumes. Uh, so glass was a very important uh, thing used in, in ancient periods, and it had a very long history. It was invented uh, more than a thousand years ago, around 3000 before Christ. And there's a very beautiful history about it, that with the people who sailed uh, in the eastern Mediterranean, uh, at the end of the day, they landed at the beach and uh, they tried to cook some food and uh, together with the, the heat of the fire to cook food and the, uh, the soda blocks they, they took from their boat uh, the, and the sand in the beach that made a glass. And it was a very, uh, very uh, funny thing for these people because they didn't expect that. And the next morning when they wake up, they saw that uh, with these three things, heat, sand, soda, uh, they got some, some, some glass. And that was the, the beginning of glass. Of course, not of the, the glass bottles and all the, the glass things which were used later on in Roman, uh, Roman houses. But uh, it was, in anyway, the invention as, you, as described by Plinius. And much later, uh, in around 1500 BC, the first glass uh, faces and uh, first glass uh, objects were made which could contain, for example, perfumes or cosmetics. Um, well, these, these uh, glass objects in the 15th century BC were Egyptian glass objects, mostly. Uh, they were uh, called the so-called the, the so core glass objects, which meant that they were, uh, were made uh, with a core, and around the core, glass threads were, uh, were made, and it was uh, smoothened, and afterwards the core was removed, and then you had a hollow, a very small hollow thing, and in that uh, small hollow face you could put some cosmetics, for example. Now, could you tell me what from this Egyptian period changed into the elaborate kind of uh, antique glass that we now see here? Well, the most important change was in the, the first century BC when they invented the blowing pipe, and that was very revolutionary for the, the glass history. Uh, it was invented probably in the eastern Mediterranean, and uh, while well, someone invented that you could blow into uh, some glass, uh, some, some air, which meant that uh, you could uh, make large bottles and large uh, vases and bowls and all and dishes, etc. You have a lot of uh, different shapes in glass, and that was very important because afterwards it was easier to make glass with that blowing pipe. It went much quicker than before, and you had an endless uh, kind of shapes in, in glass, and that made glass uh, much more common for uh, in, in Roman period, especially in the first century AD, a little bit later. Yeah. Now. Were certain kinds of bottles used for certain objects, like today we have a kind of shape for this, for ketchup bottles or whatever, was, was that true in the ancient times also? Yeah, you can see that uh, certain bottles were used for wine, certain bottles were used for oil, and uh, the small bottles, most of the small bottles and in this exhibition as well, were all used for cosmetics. Uh, many of the small bottles uh, in the Egyptian period and in the later Roman period were used for cosmetics, for perfumes. Uh, people could take them with them to the bath uh, houses, uh, to, to the baths, uh, could use them at home. And the larger bottles, especially the, the, the simple, well, simple uh, green bottles, were used for wine or for oil. 
And the green means that they were made from just normal glass. They were not uh, especially colored uh, because there was some iron in, in the sand uh, of which the glass was made. They colored a little bit green. And you see many of these green bottles were used in daily life for, for wine bottles and, and just to store wine and to, 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 to keep it uh, in the houses. Yeah. Now, I know that with, with glass, uh, we have leaded crystal glass, for example. As the methodology for glass manufacturing became more refined. Did they also add things to change colors, to, uh, to bring about uh, different types of glass? And what was the effect of, well, I have to assume much of the stuff lay underground for a long period of time. Did that have an effect on the coloration or the type of glass? Now, in ancient periods, they uh added uh, metal uh, oxides to, to make colors in the glass. For example, cobalt or iron or copper, uh, which made different colors uh, from, from very green, very blue, very, uh, well, all kind of colors. Uh, and they even could make color, uh, colorless glass without colors, or just not white glass, but without any color. And uh, they could make these, this glass without color for, uh, by adding some uh, extra metals or by using very, very clear and very pure sand. That was very important. So they, they added things to, for, uh, at glass uh, to make these colors. And afterwards, when these glasses were, uh, well, were gone, I mean, uh, when they were uh, refound in, in, gra in graves, in ancient graves, in Roman graves, uh, they are much affected by the ground, by, by the earth. And uh, the effect of that is that they all uh, have kind of extra color, extra, uh, yeah, well, how do you say that in English? Um, irisatie. Yeah. Uh, luminance. Luminance, sorry. And they have this, this luminance, uh, which is uh, very uh, particular for these, for these Roman glasses, and they are very attractive by this luminance. And what you see that most collectors uh, collecting ancient glass uh, are attracted by this luminance in, in these glasses. Uh, now, I noticed in your exhibition you've also included a, a kind of an extraordinary thing, uh, a painting by a contemporary Dutch painter. Uh, what, why is that included in your exhibition? Well, we have three paintings by Henk Helmantel, and Helmantel is a painter who lives in the north of Holland, in Groningen, near Groningen. And he paints uh, these bottles, these glass bottles, but also other things, uh, these still levens, the famous still levens, in the way they already did in the 17th century. And the, 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 the nice thing is that he uh, paints the, the glasses he has in his workshop. And now we have made a combination here in the exhibition of the paintings and the glasses, which are in the showcase, just in front of the paintings. So you can compare the glasses, the Roman glass from the first and the second century AD, and the very recent paintings, which were painted uh, two, three, four years ago. In the exhibition, um, could you explain how you've laid it out and what is included in the exhibition? Yeah, well, we start the exhibition uh, around 1500 BC in the Egyptian period, when the first small bottles were made uh, in the technique of core glass. Uh, and we end the exhibition around 600 BC uh, with blown glass uh, at the end of the Roman period in, in which the, the Roman techniques still exist, but they well, have had their, their highest point and they are going back. Uh, and in between, uh, between, in that period from 1500 BC and, until 600 AD, we have the different techniques which starts with core glass and then with mold glasses, with blown glasses, mold blown glasses, uh, and all kinds of, of different techniques in the, in the blown glass uh, technique. Now, I did glass blowing at one period when I went to the university, and uh, we blew, we would get a uh, gather out of a, out of a uh, glory hole, we called it in those days, and then yeah. we'd shape it and blow it out a little bit and work it. And once you got it out, then you would take it off, put it on a punty. Yeah. Could you tell us, uh, has this ancient art changed very much from what I describe, or, and how did they do it? No, it didn't change very much. Uh, when you compare the, 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 uh, the way of gla uh, blowing glass uh, in the first century AD and now, there's nearly hardly anything changed. The only thing which changed is that the, the, 
the people are not very skilled in, in, in very well trained in blowing the free blowing glass. I mean, we went to the, the, the Royal Crystal uh, Fabrics in Leerdam, the very famous uh, glass factories, and we asked them to make some copies of the Roman glasses we have here, the Roman free blown glasses from the first century until the fourth century AD. And it was quite difficult for them because they are not trained in this kind of techniques. They mostly use molds and they uh, use uh, to blow in these molds. And then it is okay, but the free blown technique is much more difficult. And you can see that in, in Leerdam as well, that they are not well uh, used to do this, to, uh, to make this, this type of glasses. Uh. Now, could you tell us how long the exhibition will be here? when people can come and see it, and where exactly is the Alec Pearson? Because you want people to come and see this excellent little ex exhibition of glass, huh? Yes, I, I want most, most people coming here to, in the Alec Pearson Museum in the center of Amsterdam, the Oude Turfmarkt 127 in the center of Amsterdam. And the exhibition the show is here until the 16th of September, and we are open from Tuesday to Friday from 10 to 5, and Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 5. Well, I hope they come out too because it's a, a lovely show and uh, they can learn something about glass, this object that we take for granted so much today. Okay, thank you.